So Vernon Reed from the group Living Color is saying Ernie Isley from the Isley Brothers was shut out and totally ignored by guitar publishing and he is calling on people to boost his social media following. So basically Vernon is saying he feels Ernie Isley was shut out of music media during the 1970s. In a series of posts he is showing his support for Ernie also saying that Ernie was not given the credit or coverage nor respect he deserved as an artist. He also feels that Ernie barely has any followers now because he was marginalized in the 70s by the guitar media and rock establishment of that time. One of his posts say, understand Mr. Isley's incredible Hendrix inspired work with his brothers while being utterly ignored by the 70s rock industrial complex made it possible for me to even dream up at Living Color in the first place, which is his band. Now this did catch my eye, especially because we did a video on the Isley brothers and the tremendous success that they've had spanning over six decades. However, it is not lost on us that Ernie may not get the credit he deserves for his contribution on some of their hits, including these songs where his guitar riffs are notable. Now, I'm not sure if it has to do with the fact that uh, he was a, a mentor of Jimi Hendrix. And Jimi Hendrix is the name that everybody knows and rightly so. But it does not make sense that Ernie is not known just as well. So Vernon Reed started a campaign on social media to get Ernie to at least 10,000 followers. So when Vernon started this campaign, Ernie was below 2,000 followers and now he's over 9,000. So I feel like more people need to understand his contributions to music as well as what he's done for the Isley Brothers and their success as well. Ernie was influenced by Jose Feliciano's version of Light My Fire and in 1968 that's when he got his first guitar. He is also a self-taught musician. He actually started out playing bass. In fact in 1968 he did his first professional recording playing bass on the Isley Brothers Breakthrough Funk Smash Is Your Thing which was released in 1968. Then from there he played electric guitar, acoustic guitar, and drums on the group's early 1970 albums Get Into Something, Giving It Back, and Brother 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 before he fully joined the group in 1973 becoming a multi-instrumentalist playing acoustic guitar, electric guitar, drums, and percussion. So the brother's very talented. He's also a prolific songwriter, writing amongst others, Fight the Power, both part one and part two, Harvest for the World, Voyage to Atlantis, At Your Best You Are Loved, Footsteps in the Dark, Brown Eyed Girl, and co-writing that Lady Between the Sheets and Take Me to the Next Phase. Ernie says Jimi Hendrix was hired by his brothers in March of 1963 and that he was a house guest for two years in the Isley home. In fact, his first recording was with the Isley Brothers. He also mentions that he owes his success on guitar to Jimmy's early guidance. In 1963, Ernie was actually only 11 years old and Jimmy was 21 when he played with the Isley Brothers. He also goes on to say that if Jimmy had been around when that lady came out, he would have given Ernie a big hug and asked him, where in the hell did you learn that? And of course, Ernie would reply and say, from listening to you. On Nothing To Do But Today, he was playing six and 12 string acoustics as well as electric guitar. Ernie doesn't have one signature sound. It's always changing and that's what makes him great. So I think it's time for him to get his flowers as well. If you have a Twitter account, please follow him on his Twitter account. Thank you for watching.